can I describe Oaxaca? Not an easy question to answer. Vibrant. Complicated. Rich. Words just don't do it justice. Oaxaca is an experience. I love these! The first day of any trip is the most exciting. I always try to see and eat as much as I possibly can. This trip to Oaxaca is no exception. Mm. Oh, yeah. In my kitchen, grilled tasajo torta with smoky guacamole, crunchy nopalito salad with pickled chipotle, creamy natilla with fresh berries, recipes inspired by my food field day, and one hungry boy to help me eat them. Oh, yeah, that's really good. Mm. This is One Day in Oaxaca. Patty's Mexican Table is made possible by... Some things are always there for you, like your alarm clock, right on time. Your parking space. Seriously? Girls' night, always there. And avocados from Mexico. They're always there because they're fresh all year round. Avocados from Mexico. La Costeña, por sabor. Taste that transcends. More information at mexicorico.com. Food brand meats with traditional Hispanic flavor. The Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Rural Development, Fisheries, and Food. Mex Best. And the National Agricultural Council. Piece of meat. And my boys are big meat eaters. So I'm always looking for new ways to cook meat at home. In Oaxaca, I tried this meat that's just incredibly delicious and it's called tasajo. I'm gonna make it at home and I'm gonna use it to make a gigantic overstuffed torta. Tasajo is salted air dried beef that's pounded really, really, really thin. I have a two pound piece of the most beautiful flank steak. So you always have to make sure when you buy meat that it looks plump and colorful. And when you touch it, it should spring back up. I'm going to cut slices of about a quarter inch. I'm cutting against the grain, because that is going to make the piece of meat that you're cutting be very tender. This is really an amazing recipe. After I made it the first time at home and realized it was so easy, I was just making it, you know, one day after the other, one day for tacos, one day for tortas, one day over rice. So I'm gonna grab a slice of the flank and I'm gonna put it in between the parchment paper and as you pound it, the meat is gonna really tenderize. Oh yeah. You want it really as thin as prosciutto, okay? Oh, this is perfect. I mean, it's almost breaking. So you wanna air dry the meat. And so you wanna put it in a drying rack so that there is air flowing under and over the meat. And I'm adding salt, so it's gonna be one and a half teaspoons on one side, and then one and a half teaspoons on the other side. Now we're gonna let it sit here for at least three hours. You're gonna see how the meat really transforms. The inspiration for this recipe? We'll get to that in a second. First, walk with me. 
Pueblo of Oaxaca. The food is amazing, people are so charming, resourceful, creative, so full of stories. Every corner has something to share. Oaxaca is a state right in the middle of the country. The capital is a colonial city founded by the Spanish in 1526. When you get to Oaxaca, you are entering the land of magical realism. Things that you think you know suddenly take a new dimension, new colors, new flavors. It's one of the most diverse places in the world. Oaxaca is so complex and there's so much to see and do. Whenever I travel, I try to experience as much of that destination as I can in the first 24 hours. Look at the colors of the walls and the stones in the buildings and even the color in the sky. So rich, makes you want to move here. In fact, I've told Amy that if we were to move to Mexico, I would want to settle in Oaxaca. With just one day in a city this interesting, here's a tip. Make a local friend. Miguel is a tour guide and proud Oaxaqueño. He agreed to be my friend for the day. What is it about Oaxaca well, that makes it so magical? Let me show you. If you're only in Oaxaca for 24 hours, you have to see the truly impressive Templo de Santo Domingo. And it's made of uh, cantera? Yes, this is the cantera. This is the cantera, and I know that it has that greenish hue that when it rains, it yes. glitters, right? Yes. Building on the Santo Domingo began in the late 1500s, but it took over 200 years to complete. Today, it's the most recognizable symbol of the city of Oaxaca. The colors look different in Oaxaca. In Oaxaca have a, a song, and the letters say, Oh, Oaxaca, tu cielo de zafir. The sky is amazing only here. Many people talk Zapotec. It's very traditional in the towns. Amazingly, many people still speak the language of the Zapotecs, the pre-Columbian civilization of Oaxaca. And right outside the city stands Monte Albán, the original native settlement of the Zapotecs. This incredibly preserved ancient city was the center of social and political life of the Zapotecs for centuries. When the Spanish arrived, they built the city of Oaxaca just a few miles away. Today, you can still walk the ancient city and imagine life in Oaxaca centuries ago. If you know me, you know it doesn't take long before my appetite starts to take over my explorations. In Mexico, when you're with a local like Miguel and you tell him you're hungry, there's a good chance he'll take you to the market. And when you're with a local, always do as the locals do. If you're in Oaxaca for one day, you need to eat grasshoppers. Grasshoppers, called chapulines, are popular all over Oaxaca. And not just like delicacy popular. I mean, Oaxacans eat grasshoppers like Americans eat potato chips. There's yes. different sizes. And flavors, but garlic, chili, and lemon. I've never had grasshoppers. Look at the size of those things. It looks like they were just jumping around this morning. I'm starting with the smaller and I'm building up. Mmm. It's very garlicky. Oh, it's addicting. It's oh, yum. Delicious. Mmm. Let's try to find the biggest chapulín. Okay. That is nice. Pati, 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 pati. Mmm. rico. Mmm. rico. Sí. You know, it's crunchier than that one. Yes. I like the tiny ones better because they feel like a condiment. They feel like an ingredient. The large grasshopper feels like a large grasshopper. <laughs> Another local favorite, El Pasaje del Humo. Translation, smoky hallway. But you can also call it meat lover's paradise. I love to be able to interact. You go, you walk, you decide which stand you want to buy your meat from. And I love having the choice, because when you go to the restaurant, the cook is choosing your meat. Here, you are choosing your meat. So we have the tasajo, or the salted beef. We yes. have the cecina, which is marinated pork, chorizo. So no da un combinado. Hey, we need 
Tortillas. You? To clap three times yes. and tortillas will appear. Yes. That is up. And now. Oh, ready. Wow. <laughs> really? And these are enormous. Yes, it is. Right when you're assembling your tacos, the lady with the salsas and the garnishes comes. Ah. Radish, guacamole. I love these. Taco time. I'm gonna follow your lead. It's like Simon says. <laughs> okay. On my bed of cecina and chorizo, I of course dress it with those tiny chapulines, fresh avocado, and a delicious salsa. Sí. with flavor. Yes. Kim, delicia. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna make a nopalito salad with pickled chipotle, and it's gonna be the perfect complement to that torta. What I'm gonna start with is that pickled chipotle pickle. We start over medium heat, and I'm going to add three quarter cups of olive oil. And as it heats, I'm gonna slice an onion. Now, the cut that I'm gonna do in Mexico, we call it a pluma, which translates to feather, because you really wanna try and slice it thin. And then I'm gonna add five cloves of garlic. We're just making a very light pickle. Simple pickle, but it's full of flavor and texture, and I'm just cooking the onions until they start to wilt. And then I'm gonna add two teaspoons of Oaxaca and oregano, two teaspoons of salt, and then I'm adding the dried chipotle chilies. The chipotle chilies are jalapeños, then they dry them and they smoke them. All of the flavors from the chili super intensify. What we're doing now is bringing them back to life and unlock all of that flavor inside of that chili. The last step is I'm going to add one and a half cups of apple cider vinegar, but I'm gonna raise the heat to medium high. What we want now is for these to bubble for a couple of minutes. So we're gonna do the carrots. You can cut them in any shape or size that you want, but I like to go for bite size. Okay, so we have the carrots, and now we're gonna do the zucchini. Cut into three. Pieces like that. And you can see how the chile is already rehydrated. I'm gonna turn these off now. So we have the carrots and the zucchini, and now we're going to prepare the nopales. Now, the only thing standing between the immense and immeasurable benefits from nopales and you and the world are its little thorns because it's sort of a pain to clean them, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now, you don't wanna peel all the skin from the nopal. You just wanna go like that and remove the thorns. You cut a piece in the bottom, and then you cut around the nopal. It has such a delicious crunch, see? Gonna cook the vegetables, and I'm gonna add some salt, two teaspoons into boiling water, and then the vegetables are gonna take turns. The carrots are gonna go in here for about two minutes. You can see how the color intensified, and they are still crunchy. Mm-hmm. The zucchini is gonna go in here really for 30 seconds. putting them in the same bowl. And the nopales are gonna cook for 10 minutes. So after 10 minutes, the nopalitos cooked, but they still have a crunch, and you can see how the color changed to a darker green. And then you must 
super rinse the nopales because as they cook, these gelatinous liquid comes out, similar to okra. Now, toss our crispy veggies with these pickle that has been sitting there, and then that pickle just dresses everything. This is gonna be a memorable salad. This is not gonna be like, oh, one of those salads. This is gonna be a great salad. You can eat this hot or you can chill it and eat it later. Mm. Oaxaca is one of Mexico's best culinary destinations. Chocolates, chapulines, tamales, tejates, tlayudas, and more moles than you could ever count. I'm getting the most out of this one day, and I want to try it all, starting at Origen with Mexico top chef winner, Rodolfo Castellanos. Rodolfo is one of the new modern Oaxacan chefs, and he tries to use Oaxacan ingredients in new ways. I wanted to have a restaurant to enjoy what we have here, and this is a combination between local ingredients and inspiration of Oaxaca. Rodolfo is going to make a tuna tostada that mixes what he sees as a combination of the best of Oaxaca and the best of the techniques that he's learned. We're gonna open watermelon. You compress the watermelon. Yes. It's like watermelon on steroids. Yes, basically. On a blue corn tortilla, Rodolfo builds his tostada with avocado, tuna, that watermelon, and then the special sauce. So this is a chilhuacle vinaigrette. So the vinaigrette has the dried chilhuacle. Yes. Normally used in moles, chihuatle vinaigrette is a new twist to that iconic Oaxacan flavor. It's a refreshing dish. It's very layered. Mm, that vinaigrette is so smoky. Yes, that's that. So exactly. you're playing and I'm liking it. Yeah, thank you. This is really fantastic. Modern food, check. Market food, check. Luckily, I saved just enough room for a quintessential Oaxacan experience. I told you I wanted to try it all, right? Martina, so I'm so happy to be here. Como Muchas empezó? gracias por venir. Martina opened Catedral over 40 years ago, and she's been serving traditional recipes from her region ever since. Entonces, ¿de dónde vienes? Where did you come from? De Tehuantepec, Oaxaca, del Istmo. So it's the food you grew up with, and you've just updated the presentation. Pero oh, en la esencia es la misma. The first dish is molotes, which are plantain fritters stuffed with seasoned pork and served with crema. It is muy linda. Mm. The plantain is so sweet. You can feel the chunks of meat, and I taste yes. olives, almonds. Remember when I said I wanted to try it all? Here it comes. The process for cooking the suckling pig at Catedral is like a dance. Bueno, el lechón se da en las mayordomías en Tehuantepec. So there are celebrations. Es el de para bodas, para fiestas. In and out of the oven, marinades and moles until it falls off the bone right onto my plate. Este es mole coloradito. Y no pica. No me picó nada, es que, mm, es que está delicioso. Sí. Lo meto en el molito. Exacto. Mm. Mm. It's succulent and moist, and the juices are, are kind of sweet. Me sabe un poquito sí. almendra. Sí. Qué delicia. If you're gonna be in Oaxaca City for one day, wake up early and then just eat as much as you possibly can because there is so much amazing food. One day is a gift. But if you can manage more days, then you'll be doing yourself a favor. Natilla is a very popular Mexican dessert. It's like a very light, puffy, and creamy pudding. This is how you make it. You pour four cups of milk into a saucepan. Add a little bit of vanilla. I go for a teaspoon. And set it over medium heat until you see a thin film cover the milk. That's actually called nata, where the name natilla comes from. And then you turn it on. You don't want the milk to boil. In a separate bowl, whisk five egg yolks. 
add a half a cup of granulated sugar and mix that up. And then you're gonna add one can of evaporated milk, two tablespoons cornstarch, and then whisk that, just making sure that there are no bubbles or lumps. Little by little, ladle that hot milk into the egg yolks. What that does is help you not to scramble the eggs. Then you're gonna pour it back into the saucepan, cook it over low, medium heat for another five to eight minutes. Don't let it boil, and you have to whisk constantly. Once it thickens, gently ladle into ramekin and sprinkle canela on top. Let cool and serve at room temperature or refrigerate them for later. We're making the tasajo tortas and I'm gonna make some smoky guacamole to go with that. We're going to use a roasted slice of onion, two roasted garlic cloves and a roasted serrano chile. This is not your average guacamole at all. I'm gonna mash with some salt, the juice of one lime. And I like guacamole to stay chunky, so it's okay if the paste is not like completely smooth. I'm gonna chop some cilantro. You can see that mixture in there, and then I'm gonna add three ripe avocados. I'm just gonna coarsely dice it in here, and then just... It is definitely a Oaxacan-inspired guacamole. Simple, but so delicious. So good. It's like the roasted ingredients, they really make it shine, like they bring it to the top of that guacamole bowl. It's so good. This is the final tasajo. You can see how the marbling of the meat got so accentuated and the color of the meat also turned into this beautiful, beautiful red. Brush some oil and this is going to cook in a second, I'm gonna blink and it's gonna be ready because the meat is so thin. So it's gonna be crunchy a little around the edges. So you can see, I mean, how quickly it cooks and this is ready. Mi amor, mira lo que estoy haciendo. Tasajo. Tacos, sí. Yeah, Pero en vez de tacos, we'll make a gigantic torta. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, looks good. You wanna taste to see if it's as good as last time? Yeah, should I just? Yeah. My, my fingers. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm, mm. it's like jerky. It does taste a little like jerky, mm. no? Here, you can assemble yours. Okay. First, okay, voy a poner frijolitos. Everything together. See, no? Yeah. It's so thin that you can pack it up. Yeah. Do you want to put some pickled jalapenos? Yeah. Cheese? Since the moment that I was slicing it, I was dreaming of this moment. What a beauty! Yeah. Mmm. 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 That's good. When you have something like this, you don't need words. <laughs> no. So you have this outrageous torta. Next to that, you have this light, beautiful vegetable salad. It's vinegary, but it has that nice crunch. Mm -hmm. See, I can hear you crunch. Yeah. That's really crunchy. Mm -hmm. Perfect combo. That's uh, natilla. Whenever I have natilla, I think of that first trip to Oaxaca. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's really good. Mm. When you spoon it into your mouth, it feels like you ate a piece of a cloud and it turned into milk. No? It is kind of like what you would imagine a cloud to taste, taste? like. If, yeah. <laughs> this is so light. Would you go for another torta? I could definitely go for another torta right now. <laughs> 
Cheers to that. For recipes and information from this episode and more, visit patihinich.com. And connect! Find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest at Patty Hinich. Patty's Mexican Table is made possible by... The Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Rural Development, Fisheries, and Food Mex Best and the National Agricultural Council. Introducing Food Campirano Mexican Cheeses with resealable packaging. La Costeña por sabor. Taste that transcends. More information at mexicorico.com. Some things are always there for you, like your alarm clock, right on time. Your parking space, seriously? Girls' night, always there. And avocados from Mexico, they're always there because they're fresh all year round. Avocados from Mexico. Proud to support Patty's Mexican Table on public television.